Hi, I'm from JH Leather, and the question that I get asked the most is what tools should I use as a beginner and where can I find them? So usually with tool time, we do a deep dive into a certain tool or a set of tools, but today what I'm gonna do is give you a brief overview of all the hand tools that I have. We're gonna kick things off with measuring, and to start with, you're gonna want some rulers. So the ones I have, I have a 12 inch or a 30 centimeter metal ruler. Now I prefer the metal ones over the plastic ones because they're a bit more durable and you can easily pick these up in any hardware store. Likewise, if you want something a bit longer, like a meter rule, like I also have here, you are likely to be able to easily pick that up online on a site like eBay or at your local hardware store. Again, this is the same for the safety ruler that I have. Now, this one I actually got from Abbey England, but if you do a quick Google search for a MAN safety ruler, you can easily pick one up and they're pretty cheap. I think my one was about three pounds. Another thing that you might find handy is a straight edge so my straight edge is about 185 centimeters long and I use it for putting straight edges on leather so you might not necessarily need this as a beginner but if you are looking to cut belts and stuff like that and are going to be using the longer hides you're going to want to have a straight edge to help you keep your hide nice and straight so that is also another option. And again, this one I got from Abbey England. But if you put in a Google search for a straight edge or a 185 centimeter ruler, you should be able to find something. Another handy thing that you're gonna want if you are making belts and dog collars and that sort of thing is just a standard retractable tape measure and these can be easily purchased from your local hardware store. Something that may be a little bit harder to get hold of but you should be able to find one over a Google search is a three inch engineer set square. Now you can get larger ones than this but this is the one that I have had for years and I really quite like the size of it and this one I think specifically is a silver line tools one that I got on eBay and it's really handy because the engineer's tools are very thin compared to a woodworking tool. So when it comes to marking out your leather a scratch all is a really handy thing to have. Now the one that I have here in the workshop is a two and a half inch Osborne tools ones but you can pick these up pretty easily from any online sort of leather craft retailer. Another thing that you are going to want is a pair of dividers. Now I prefer something a bit chunky like the ones I have here compared to the slightly sort of thinner ones because they tend to be in my experience a bit more flexible and therefore a bit harder to actually mark your work out. You can also get wing dividers which are going to be very good for your leather work. Wing dividers can be easily purchased at most leather craft retailers. If you are looking for the engineers one like I've got just make sure that you get one with a pair of chunky legs so that they're going to be nice and stable when you are using them. A couple other handy things to have when you're marking your leather out are a set of silver, gold or white gel pens and also a water soluble pencil. Now these are really handy for marking out leather that doesn't really take a scratch all as well so something like a chrome tan hide or a really textured veg tan hide. Gel pens can be easily purchased from most stationery stores or you can get them online along with the water soluble pencils. Moving on to some cutting tools. Now one of the tools that I like to use a lot is a craft tool and you might know it as a small pattern knife. Now these are generally small knives with either a fixed or a removable blade and they are to be held a bit like a pencil. Now these are great for cutting out smaller pieces and sort of around corners where you need a bit more precision. You can also use a scalpel if you are unable to get hold of the craft knife. The alternative to the craft knife is a clicker knife. Now these come with a screw handle so you can actually change the blades really easily and you can usually get a straight blade or a curved blade. Now the curved blade is better for doing more precision cuts but they are both very handy to have and the blades can usually be picked be picked up for about two pounds each and from my research the handles start at about 15 pounds. So if you are looking for a specialist leather knife my preference is a single head knife. Now these are great for cutting and skiving and you can pick them up relatively cheap from a company called George Barnsley and Sons and they're also sold at Abbey England and Metropolitan Leather here in the UK. Now you can also get a round knife which is a bit larger but is also a very good option and they come in various sizes and prices. 
So if you can't get hold of a leather specialty knife, what you can do is actually use a Stanley knife or a utility knife with the cut off blades. Now these are going to be great for you to get started because they are relatively cheap and can be easily picked up from local hardware stores and they're going to be great for cutting straighter pieces of leather. When it comes to skiving there are a couple options here. So for the majority of my work I do actually use my single head knife but I do also have a paring knife which you can pick up very cheaply. So this one that I have here is from Abbey England and I got it for about £6 excluding VAT. Another option is a specific skiving knife. Now for this I would suggest the Japanese skiving knife because it has a straight blade and it doesn't have the curved corners at the end so it's going to make it a bit easier to sharpen if you're a beginner. Another knife that I like to have here in the workshop is a 60mm rotary knife. Now these are great for cutting straight pieces on leather and you can use them easily in conjunction with your ruler. So the one that I have here, like I said, is a 60mm option and you can easily pick one of these up with a handle and blade for less than £20. So if you're going to be cutting a lot of straps in your leather work, I recommend picking up a strap cutter. Now the basic one that I have here, I have used pretty much every day for the last 12 years and it is really handy to have and you can pick these up relatively cheap from most leather craft retailers. Now earlier in the year I did treat myself to a new strap cutter and this one is just awesome. I love it so much. Now this is a bit more expensive and I believe it was 90 US dollars excluding the postage. For this larger one that I got it is handmade by a man in Russia and he goes by the name Vintage Studio Shop on Instagram. Having a pair of leather craft specific scissors is going to be really handy to have in your workshop. Now these can be picked up like a lot of items on this list from a leather craft specific supplier and once again I will have a list in the description below as well as a downloadable document with links to leather craft suppliers from around the world. Another handy little pair of scissors to have is actually this pair of thread cutting snips. Now these are nice and tiny and they're easy to get really close to the ends of your threads when you need to cut them off from your leather and you can pick them up really cheaply. If you just do a quick Google search you'll be able to find them. The ones that I have here I got off eBay but you'll be able to get them at most haberdashery shops as well. We're now going to talk a little bit about hammers and the first one that we're going to talk about is the tack hammer. Now as the name says it is for tapping tacks. So I use the tack hammer for if I am using tacks with my leather work, so on dog collars and on belts where the leather is quite thick and the glue doesn't always keep things together. Now this one I have here is a Draper Tools one and I have had it for 13 years and I think it costs about £13 and they can be easily picked up from a local hardware store. If you are wanting something a bit more specific or leather craft specific, you can get sort of a saddler's tack hammer, but they are a lot more expensive. Now there are a plethora of mallets to choose from when it comes to your leather craft. The one that I have used the most is actually a really cheap one that I picked up at a hardware store and it is just a wooden one that I have here. You can get more specialty ones like a rawhide mallet or a polymer mallet, but they are a bit more expensive and you're going to need to pick one up from a leather craft specialty store. Now one thing to note about the wooden one here or if you pick up a rawhide mallet is that if you are hitting metal tools then there is going to be some deformity that will happen over time to either of these mallets. Now not so much a necessity but there is the option to have a flat headed hammer like this one that I have here. Now this one I was actually given for my 21st birthday which was a while ago and I believe it was from a Weather leather supply. Now having done some research into this I now can't find it which is a shame because it is actually a really nice little hammer to have but a flat head hammer is going to be ideal if you want to tap your stitches down but it is not necessary and you can use a standard tack hammer for this as well. Moving on to punches, the first thing we're going to talk about is the rotary hole punch. Now there are two versions of this and the one that I recommend is the one with the lever action because it's going to make your life so much easier when it comes to actually using it with leather because it takes away so much of the actual force needed to punch the holes. The one I have is a Tenko branded one and you can pick it up on eBay for about £35. So some other punches that you might want to pick up are some circle punches, 
oval punches or some strap end punches. Now these come in all sorts of sizes and sort of options for you to choose from and they are going to be best bought from a leather craft specific supplier like one of the ones listed in the link below. Another punch that you might be interested in acquiring is the oblong punch or the crew punch. Now I have a whole video dedicated on these punches which I will link in the description below for you to have a look at and they are best bought from a leather craft specific supplier. So when it comes to edging, you're gonna to wanna to have a look at some edge bevelers. Now the ones that I use the most are one millimeter and three millimeters in their sort of jaw cutting size. And depending on the retailer that you look at, they may be numbered differently. Again, I have a whole video dedicated to these, which I will link in the description below for you to have a look at. So when it comes to creasing irons, there are quite a few different options available for you to purchase. The ones that you'll see in my video, or then the one that I use the most, is the adjustable screw crease. But from doing my research, this is more of a sort of saddlery specific tool. However, they are great to have as they can just be adjusted and you don't need to buy one of each size to get the sort of crease line that you want. The one that I have here, unfortunately, is no longer available, but you can pick up similar ones from companies like Abbey England or Blanchard Tools. You can also get fixed creases like this 1.5 millimeter one that I have here from Abbey England, and they come in various sizes, and they're more sort of ideal to use on small leather goods like wallets. Again, you can pick these up from specialty leather craft suppliers, which will be linked in the description below. So both these options can be bought from a leather craft specific supplier and they are usually around the 35 pound mark. However, it will depend on what brand you go for and which company you purchase from. The two options that we have just talked about need to be heated. So for mine, I actually use a hob. Now this is a portable hob that I got on eBay a long time ago. And if you are looking to get one, you just need to make sure that you get one that is not an induction hob, else it is unlikely to heat up your tools. Alternatively, you can use a mini flame thrower like this one, or you can also use a paraffin flame. But you can also go all out and get a very expensive leather craft specific electric tool for your creasing, which has different heads available. However, like I said, it is very expensive, so it may not be for everyone. So when it comes to staining the edges of your leather work, there are a couple of different options that you can use. If you've seen my videos, you will notice that for my black and brown stain, I actually make my own. And there is a video linked in the description where I go into more information about that. For the different color stains that I have, I actually use these stains from Metropolitan Leather, and these are more sort of specifically used for actually dyeing your leather if you're buying a natural hide. However, for my Sort of experience with them they are actually very handy at doing edges as well and you can mix them to make different colors now these ones i bought from metropolitan leather are water-based and they do also do an oil-based one so another sort of company that makes sort of stains is a company called Feebings. now these do more alcohol-based stains but they also do a range of different edge finishes and they can be picked up pretty easily from most leather craft retail outlets so if you are looking to edge paint, the one that I recommend is the Unitas Edge Paint. Now in the UK, A and A Crackenson are a retailer, and in the US, you can look at RM Leather Supply. Now to apply your edge paint or use your stain, there are various tools that you can use. So for my stain, I like to use wall daubers like this one, and also I use a paintbrush for those awkward areas around buckle turns. And then to apply my edge paint, I actually like to use the other end of the paintbrush. I have tried to use various sort of applicator pens, which I'm sure are really handy to use. However, I just didn't get on with them, so I actually just use the other end of my paintbrush. For polishing edges, there are a few different items that you can choose. The one that I like to use the most if I'm doing sort of burnishing is actually a linen cloth. And this can be easily picked up online or in sort of fabric shops. Another option is the bone folder or the wooden slicker, which are both very good and can be easily picked up from a local leather craft supplier. So it might not necessarily be for everyone. However, if you are using edge paint, a drying stand is probably quite a handy thing for you to have. Now the one that I have here starts from about 35 pounds and I picked it up from a company called Linton Leather Craft Supply. So when it comes to stitch markers, there are two main sets that are available. 
So if you're a beginner, I recommend picking up a set of diamond chisels as these can be punched through the leather all the way and they make it so you don't need an awl when you are stitching. So for a beginner, I recommend you pick up a set that is about four millimeters in size and they are relatively inexpensive. This set that I got from Abbey England cost me about £25 and consists of four different chisels. Now, as you can see, they are quite small in the hand, so they may be a bit awkward for those of you with larger hands, but there are different companies offering different chisels at different sizes, so you should be able to find one to suit you. If you are looking for a more premium stitch marker, then the pricking irons are the way to go. So the set that I use the most are from Abbey England here in the UK, and they measure 3.38 millimeters, which is about eight stitches per inch. So when it comes to stitching, you're going to need some needles. Now, the ones that I like to use are the John James Sadler's harness needles, and the size that I use are 004, and they're the smaller ones because they fit well with the thread that I use, which is generally 0.55 millimeters. These needles are pretty easy to pick up with a quick Google search, and it's likely that a leather craft supplier that you're looking to buy tools from are gonna stock them or something similar. So when it comes to stitching holes, there are a few different options available. So some you can pick up that are already assembled with the blade in the handle. You can also get some where you will need to fit the blade into the handle yourself. And there are also some where you can actually use a removable blade. Now these can be picked up at most leather craft retailers. And if you are a beginner, I suggest you buy a fixed blade one or one with a removable blade rather than trying to fit it yourself for the first time, as this can be a bit awkward because you need to make sure you get that blade seated nice and straight. So for an awl that is already assembled, you're looking at about the 18 pound mark. When it comes to stitching clams, there are a few different options for you to choose from. The ones I like to use are these tall saddler stitching clams, and this set I picked up from Abbey England from about 70 pounds. And you can get a similar set from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply in the USA. Now these need to be used with quite a tall chair, so they might not be for everyone. So you, there are other options available. You can get a stitching pony, which you can sort of sit underneath your legs, as well as desktop options. So a company called Dream Factory make a really nice range of tabletop clamps and they are available in various sizes. And they start at around $70. So there are some other tools that you might find handy to use in your leather craft. The first one being the French shave. Now I have a video on this and I will link that in the description below and that will go into a bit more detail about how to use and how to sharpen it. However, it, they are really handy to have around if you are making bags and want to split down just a small area to get the gusset to fit nicely. And also if you're looking to reduce leather and you don't have access to a splitting machine. Another tool that you might find handy is the stitch groove. Now again, this can be picked up from most leather craft suppliers and what it does is actually sinks your stitch marks down into the leather and it will stop them from getting rubbed as much as if they were left proud. Also, this can be used in conjunction with the French shave and again, there is more information on that in the link to the video in the description. So an edge rougher is something that is quite handy to have around if you're doing lots of gluing. So this one I've got here is four millimeters in width and I picked up from a company called Linton Leather Craft Supply. Now these can be picked up from about 14 pounds and if you're in the US, a company called Rocky Mountain Leather Supply also stock them. Another handy thing to have is a thing called crepe rubber. Now this is really handy for removing glue, excess glue from your leather work and it actually also helps to remove the gel pens from your work as well. I got mine from Linton Leather Craft Supply here in the UK. However, if you do a Google search for crepe rubber, it seems to be readily available. Something else that is handy to have in the workshop is sandpaper and wet and dry paper. Now these can be easily picked up from your local hardware store and they are great for smoothing out the edges on your leather craft work as well as sharpening some of your tools. Another handy thing to have are some weights. So these ones that I have here that I use for my pattern weights are actually doorstops and I got them from eBay relatively cheaply. So when it comes to leather craft tool suppliers, I have left a link in the video below with a list of leather craft suppliers from around the world. So if you have any further questions or are looking for more guidance in your leather craft, then you can join our Discord channel where we have more suppliers listed as well as easy access to lots of people with knowledge 
within Leathercraft and there is a link to that in the description below. So thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support us, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos. It really does make a difference. If you'd like to support us further, you can join us over on patreon.com where we have some special perks available for you or you can pick up some of my recently launched merchandise. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and I shall see you in the next video.